Hello and welcome back to another episode of The Corporate Etiquette, a show where we break down the corporate world so you can make better sense of it. My name is Laura and in this episode I want us to tackle passion versus profession, especially in the world of toxic positivity and especially how this relates to how do you go about choosing your career. Listen, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I have all of the answers, I really don't. And if you came to this video hoping that I will tell you exactly the four or five careers that you should be going after, I'm not going to do that. So you might leave disappointed. And if I have to come clean about everything, when I was a little girl and my mother used to ask me what I want to be when I grow up, not once, not once did I say that I want to become a product manager. While I don't have all of the answers on how you should go about choosing your career, I do have four arguments that I think we should consider when exploring what you have as options. Of course, ultimately the decision is yours and so are the consequences. But I think before we start, we have to acknowledge that now more than ever, we live in a world of toxic positivity and we are constantly being bombarded by colorful feeds with happy faces and lavish lifestyles with little to no explanation as to how those lifestyles are actually supported. I would go as far as to say that positivity is actually the new political correctness, which is very ironic given that almost 10% of the world's population actually struggles with mental health. That's almost 792 million people. And if we were to look at the US market, that's one in five people struggling with mental health. Unfortunately, a lot of this toxic positivity comes with such lines as do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life or the more aggressive stance of I don't believe in selling my time to a company. Which brings us to the question, how do you choose between passion and profession and can they be the same? So here's the first thing that I learned along the way. Number one, don't follow your early passion. When you're deciding on your career, you're usually a teenager and you're deciding which university you should go to or which specialty within your university or perhaps not going to university at all. At that point in time, your experience of the world is quite limited and that's normal, you're young. You simply haven't had enough time to do everything that's out there. But also, we have to acknowledge that you cannot be passionate about something you are not familiar with. The minimum requirement to understand if you are passionate about something is to spend enough time on it, and that's actually a pretty low bar. And unfortunately, the second minimum requirement is you might also have to spend some money on it. You generally have to buy things associated with that activity. If you're into drawing or painting, you're going to need paint and canvases and brushes. If you're trying tennis, you're gonna need a racket and clothes. If you're gonna do videos online, you're gonna need a camera, maybe a microphone, an editing software, and a laptop to actually do the editing on. So most likely by the time you are supposed to be deciding on your career, you haven't had neither the time nor the money to really experience everything that's out there. So most likely your early passion might not be your true passion. Not to mention, it's actually very tempting to limit yourself to something that you're familiar with or maybe something that you're naturally good at and say that that is your passion simply because it comes easy to you. The second thing that I want you to consider when choosing your career is actually not underestimating the financial impact of a poor paying career. Of course, this part of the video doesn't really target people that have a lot of generational wealth or they're coming from a very, very comfortable middle class family. In fact, probably a lot of this video is not for these people, but alas, for the rest of us, I strongly encourage you not to underestimate the impact of a poorly paying career, and especially if you have to go into debt to get an education. Statistically speaking, social mobility is not great in most parts of the world. So choosing a career based on your passion, but that doesn't pay very well, can plunge not only you, but your entire family into poverty. This has huge ramifications on your health, especially if you can't afford health insurance, your mobility to move into cities that actually have better pay, your ability to travel and just enjoy your free time. At the same time, if you went into a career that doesn't pay well, and also at a later time you realize that you're actually not that interested in it, then you're really in a pickle. At the same time, since your disposable income is reduced and maybe you need to have a second job to stay afloat, you're in a position where very likely you will never over the course of your lifetime get to explore your passion. And this goes back to the point I made previously that you need time and money to explore almost any passion. The third thing that I want you to consider is that maybe it is possible to choose a profitable career and become passionate about it along the way. Did you ever wonder how every now and then you see somebody on TV or giving a speech at a college about how people should follow their passion and yet they work in tax or something similar? And to be clear, I'm just picking on tax. It could be any other boring topic. 
Of course, you might say, well, you know, they're passionate about tax, so of course it turned out well for them. But what if that's not really the case? But really, let's stop to think about it. Have you ever in your life met a kid, a middle school kid, that is passionate about tax? Heck, we can take the average adult, take your friends and coworkers, for example. Do any of them say, man, I can't wait for tax season to fill out those forms? I can definitely tell you from my group of friends, I don't think anybody's very passionate about doing their taxes at the end of the year. So then how did this happen? How did we get a person on TV or at a college graduation speech saying how you should follow your passion because taxes are so amazing and they followed their passion and look how well they turned out? Are they lying? Are they some tax enthusiastic alien? What actually happened here? Well, I think the answer is they didn't find their passion. They actually built it. And how does this happen? Well, over time. They invested a lot of time in something and eventually they became good at it, namely taxes. They became experts in their fields. And I'm not just talking about the basic building blocks. That part's easy. But they became acquainted with the finer nuances of the space they were evolving in. You know, the crooks and crannies that any topic on the face of the planet has if you look into it long enough. And they made sure they knew all about it. So now that you're the expert, what does that bring? Well, your peers start to respect you because they see you as a subject matter expert. And along with that will come monetary rewards, either because you're more valuable now to the company because you're such an expert in your field, or because new and better opportunities are given to you. And that's one aspect that I don't think we talk about enough. If you are well known in your field, if you are known to be an expert, you actually get to work on much more interesting projects than when you first started out. You're no longer filing taxes for small businesses at the end of the year. Instead, you're asked to work with smart people that actually are trying to solve complex and challenging problems. You know, the kind of stuff that makes you think, the kind of stuff that makes you push yourself. And when you reach the end and you actually solve the problem, you're thinking, damn, I did good today. Now that's exciting. That's something you can be passionate about. So by choosing a career that can be profitable, but maybe that has a boring reputation, by starting with mastery and putting in the work, you'll get the respect of your peers, you'll get more monetary rewards, and you get to work on much more interesting projects. If that's not how you build a passion, I don't know what is. The fourth thing that I want you to consider is why does it have to stop at one? I know, I know, you probably listened to all of this video and you're thinking, yeah, 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 but what if that, what if that tax guy, what if his dream is actually to be a painter? What if that was his passion? Let me ask again, are we really supposed to be so one-dimensional that you have one passion in this entire life and one passion only and, well, you best choose well because once you've chosen it, you cannot go back. Isn't that just a little bit silly? Most people will have more than one interest and that's perfectly fine. And even people that work in fields that they are passionate about when they are kids may actually learn that after doing it as a job, they're not so interested in doing it anymore. Because ultimately doing something as a job and doing something as a hobby or for fun are two very different things. A lot of people actually choose hobbies that are completely different from their day job. So for example, people that work with computers all day will often choose hobbies that involve some sort of manual labor, like woodworking or sewing, in order to decompress after a long day. I wanna keep this video at a palatable length and I hope I've given you enough food for thought to Maybe just consider what you want to be when you grow up. And as my closing argument, let me very clearly state there is nothing wrong with having a job that pays the bills and a hobby in the weekend that makes you happy. In fact, it's actually quite normal. That's how most people do it. And if it so happens that your job picks up and actually becomes your main source of income, then great. But I want to encourage you not to sacrifice your financial stability chasing something that you're just kind of interested in in high school. If you found this useful, then do give this video a thumbs up because it does get it in front of more people. And if you want to stay in touch with me and find out more about how the corporate world works, then click subscribe and ring that bell so you get notified every time I put out a new video. That's it for today. Have a good one. If your passion is just being a small cat, then perhaps life will turn out very well.